Welcome to The Doc Dudes, your premier podcast for a behind-the-scenes look at the latest in aesthetic medicine. Hosted by the cosmetic surgeons at Graper Harper Cosmetic Surgery in Charlotte, North Carolina, The Doc Dudes brings you interviews with insightful guests, expert tips from experienced medical professionals, and lots of laughs along the way. And now, here's Dr. Garrett Harper, Dr. Robert Graper, and Dr. Evan Zug, also known as The Doc Dudes. Uh, welcome to the Doc Dudes. I'm Dr. Robert Graper, along with Dr. Garrett Harper and Dr. Evan Zug. We have a special episode t- entitled "Beauty and the Facelift," and who better to talk about that than our very special guest, Barbara McKay, who's here in the studio with us. We've known her for years. She's a legend in Charlotte, North Carolina. Yes. We're just so proud to have her with us. I Woo-hoo. am thrilled to yeah. be here. This is my happy place, and you all are my I know. heroes. I and talk been, about you all the time. We've been talking about all our commonalities with Atlanta folk and all that kind of stuff. It's great. So it's been um, really great to, to meet you. Thank you. Um, first of all, I want to say I've had a lot of great feedback from people on the Doc Dudes. Has anybody talked to you guys about it? I've had some good feedback as well. Good. People people want to hear this kind of stuff. Yeah, I think it's neat. I didn't think that, but they do. Yeah. They think, really are interested. I think it's neat. I think it's a good avenue for them, so I'm glad we're doing this, and we hope that our audience um, enjoys it too. Uh, you know, I'm going to read from script right now because her, Barbara— her bio is so big well, and large and impressive. She's way too important for me to miss anything. <laughs> right. no, so if it sounds like I'm that. reading, I am reading, right? No, we absolutely do. And don't and go Mackay. That's right. And Are then we? we're going to get to your your experience here and okay. why you chose everything um, to be done here and all that. But here is Barbara's bio. Her many years of television, radio, and magazines have made Barbara McKay one of Charlotte's most popular and recognizable media personalities. For her numerous TV shows and specials, Barbara has traveled the world to interview top newsmakers, major stars in, in the entertainment industry, and prominent sports figures. After hosting her daily top-rated show, Top of the Day, mm-hmm. for 16 years on 16 CBS affiliate years. WBTV, WBTV, Barbara went on to create, executive produce, and host several other lifestyle shows locally, regionally, and nationally. A wide range of brands and companies have leveraged Barbara's position as a trusted advisor to her viewers, readers, and social media followers, recognized for her professionalism and communication expertise and beauty. Oh, oh, that's I'll say that was of, not in the script, <laughs> but uh, I added that. Well, this you are responsible for that in this <laughs> office. <laughs> she has served as spokesperson for national and international companies, including Tyson Foods, Target, Win Dixie, Harris Teeter, Lowe's Home Depot. Lowe's Home Improvement, uh, just to name a few. Additional highlights in Barbara's media career include roles in CBS's daytime dramas, The Guiding Light, and As the World Turns. I had no idea. That's awesome. As well as appearances as a lifestyle reporter on nationally televised features. In addition to success in broadcast media, Barbara has also launched and published two successful magazines in the Charlotte market, Barbara McKay's Bride and Barbara McKay's Simply the Best. Thanks to her community activism and philanthropy, in June of 2008, Barbara was presented the Maya Angelou, I know why the cage bird sings, Women Who Lead Award for her contributions and commitment to higher education and for her personal and professional achievements. Wow, this is a heck of a CV. (laughs) Barbara's latest cookbook, which we have here, and you do look beautiful in it, um, Coming Home, Recipes and Reflections from a Life in the Spotlight include recipes, special memories, and highlights from her career, including tributes to her children, family, and her faith. And we will talk about the book, um, I think, towards kind of the end of the podcast and let people know where they can get it, I think. I, There's I, a chapter about all of you in there. Oh, that's fantastic. Aging and gracefully. Age, we are. Aging right? gracefully. Right? Yeah. I, yeah, I just read. I felt like the only time I ever really read like this is at church. So this is great, right? Much uh, fewer difficult words You're to, to read. You're a good reader. Thank you. It took me 45 years to accomplish all that, you realize. And, I, and I, it, I felt like it took me 45 so minutes to five. read it. I did. So that's good. I did. Right. And, and, and on top of that... It takes much more skill to be a surgeon on somebody's face and other (laughs) body parts than to talk on television. So that's really not an accomplishment in here with all of you. All of you, I I am in awe. You want to see how hard it is to put us on national television? (laughs) Give us a script. Yeah, you and I did a couple morning segments a couple of years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Oh, yeah, it's kind of tripping over yourself. I'm That's... just grateful. I am just grateful. And it's amazing they let me still do this. I'm still filling in on some shows. And I am certain, and I give credit where credit is due, this is an industry where they expect you to look the best you can for the age that you are. And that's why I came here. I was going to say, did that must have influenced you, it, that it, pressure, it the work pressure? It did. Uh, but but mainly, you should not be pressured by anyone but your own head and heart and let you decide what you want for you. And that's what I did. And I didn't come when you change anything. I came because I just wanted to look the best that I could for the age that I am. Perfect. And Dr. Graper, as you, that's all a good know, way to put it. You, you know, because you all have, have come to work with him, his standards are so extraordinarily high. And so I, I knew I was going to do this. And I had respected you for so long and admired you for so and long. vice versa. But I just, it, I owed it to make sure I came in for a consultation before we did anything. And that that was that sealed the deal. I you could have gone to the questions. OR that afternoon. Yeah. Oh, I was prepared. I, I researched what do I need to ask my plastic surgeon, and you had interestingly, you answered them before I had to ask, and you made me so comfortable. Well, Thank you, you. you. You've already touched on you know the main motivations of I don't like this myself. I'm not doing it for anybody else. But we also hear lots of people who say I feel more comfortable at the workplace or I'm not feeling as comfortable at the workplace with the younger workers, and I'm so talented that they still want me, but uh, I don't feel like I'm as comfortable, so I want to do this both professionally and personally and do only the things that you want done. I mean, so you've, you, you did good research. Well, Barbara, as you think back on it, do you remember specifically what your concerns and issues were? Yes, I had had an accident, and I had to go to the emergency room. I broke my jaw in three places. I'd lacerated my face. Trauma. Trauma to my head and face. Yes. What year was this? And this was um, 18. Wow. Yeah. And I, when I went to the emergency room to stop the bleeding, I had a big gash under my chin. And to stop the bleeding, they just kind of pulled up my neck and stitched across it. And I already had an old neck. So I came to see you and I just wanted to start with do you think you could do something about this? And then after you explained very thoroughly exactly what you could do about it, I then said, well, what else? While I'm under, what else could you do? And We never get that. Nobody ever says that. Oh, so right, efficient. I, right, right. I, I, oh, I couldn't wait to hear. And that's when I found out so much more about what I could do. And it was very important to me that it be very subtle. I just wanted to look refreshed. I did want my neck fixed. And I, you were well, sure you wanted that to could put it done. back where it was. Well, and do a little more if possible. <laughs> you did. Well, yeah, put it back where you were is it's, pretty great. Well, well, I think you, you touched on something important. Um, because my question is going to be, why did you choose this guy, right? <laughs> and so, uh, I mean, I know because I see his work all the time. So um, I know why you would choose him. But yeah. for people out there, I, I think. You know, I just went on a trip, and while I was out there, somebody oh, just inevitably asks you what you do, and you say, oh, I'm a, a doctor. I try to not answer uh, plastic surgery because I know I'm going to get a million consults while I'm waiting in line for the restaurant or whatever. But um, inevitably, people ask you what type of doctor, and when you say plastic surgeon, you know, they either have like a really great kind of um, feeling about it or they're like, what, what, you know, what about these celebrities that get these crazy facelifts? So I I don't really have a way to answer that because you, like a lot of people, your looks are important and, and, um, looking like your best self, um, at your age is uh, something we all strive for, but specifically when you're in front of the camera, that's a big thing. And I always kind of tell them, I, I don't, I don't know why this celebrity looks so pulled or this face looks so bad, but you you kind of already touched on a little bit. You wanted it to look natural. And I, and I think that's hugely important. Um, and so I imagine that's one of the things when you're looking at Dr. Graper's before and afters and you're kind of deciding on a doctor, you know, those are those are kind of um, characteristics of, of results that I think most people want. I think the other intimidates them and makes them say, I would never do that. Have you looked at 
fill in the blank, you know, celebrity that just looks. It's probably our biggest awful uh, obstacle. Comment yeah. In the consultation is well, if uh, this star had it and they look so bad right. and have access to all the, you know, best in Hollywood, why do they look so terrible? Right. And that's that's a real concern. And sure. we usually just say, we want to make you look like you, we want to make you look better. Uh, natural and have the scars be unimportant. The incisions are unimportant. And then we show them pictures and talk about the whole thing, just like we did with you. All good reasons that I chose you. Again, I I had a history. I had always respected him, but this was my face. Sure. I needed to it's make different. sure. You can be friends with somebody, but right, that doesn't mean you right. let them operate on your face. <laughs> yeah. And, and there were so many things about that consultation that you probably don't even remember, but I clearly remember. And I decided then I was going to share this with people because just as you were saying, people have they have preconceived notions about plastic surgery. They're going to either judge you or they're going to say, I want what you have. So I decided to just make it a uh, more accessible for people and make it make people realize you can talk about this. So as soon as I began talking about this, it is amazing how many people I heard from. Yeah. They thanked me. First of all, it was surprising how many were shocked that I was sharing the information. Mm -hmm. And it was like, why not? My mother, growing up, my mother always said, if you look good, you feel good. And if you feel good, you do good. Yeah. We see that every day. I just wanted yeah. to have, I wanted to feel good. And I wanted to do good. And so part of my doing good is I wanted to, I wanted people to know it's okay to have this done. And after I put it in my book and after every time I post, every time I post, I get all these direct messages that I want to say it on the, they're still a little bit intimidated by putting it out there to everybody, but they say, thank you so much. Or they say, oh, I love him. I went to him for da, 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 da. And it's it's very gratifying to me to know that I feel like it's a service. Some people might not think that, but it's a real service to people. And I hear from people all over the country, especially since my book came out, sure. all over the country. And I've had several calls from Beverly Hills yeah. because of all that I've done all these years that I've gotten to know a lot of people out there. And they have said, oh, my God. Goodness, I wish. Oh, yeah. how I wish he were here. Oh, how I wish. Some talked to me about, one person talked to me for two hours mm. about how to come here, where she sure. could stay, all of these things. And it's very gratifying to hear people that curious and knowing that you helped them, not only helped them, but helped them find a doctor and a place sure. to come. And all of you, and I know you agree with me, all of you reflect his standards. And that's why you're here. Well, and I think it... it Having someone with your character and with your achievements, I think it, it certainly legitimizes um, some uh, elements of the profession because I do think that some people look at it like it's like it's crazy land sometimes. Well, and one I mean, of the biggest things that you overcame at the very beginning was how am I going to tell my friends? Uh, and I usually say just tell them the truth. Yeah. I mean, this is. 2024, yeah. and it's not uh, 25 years ago when you were embarrassed. And if you are embarrassed, I don't know, maybe you shouldn't do this. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. right. Think, Please yourself. Well, and one way I, I talk to patients about that is um, whether it's face or tummy or breasts or anything like that, you know, I get patients who say, well, I, I don't want anybody to know. And I'm like, you don't. You don't want your best friends to know. You don't want your spouse to know. Like, and, you know, there's going to be a, a difference, job, right? Like, right. you're going to yes. be able to tell. I hope, yeah, yeah. But, I hope but, they know. But my, my follow up to that is, I think what you're saying is, you don't want to be at the beach in your bikini playing Kadima paddle, and people automatically look at you and say, "I know she had a tummy tuck." Like that, I get. Like there are people who have improvements and great results that don't look operated on, right? Like that comes under natural when I say that. Correct. And so that's, that's what I think people mean when they say like, I, I don't, I don't want people to know. Of course you want people to know. Well, you want them to notice yeah. that, you, well, you know, that you just look good. What, how do you stay looking so good? That's the comment we want. Right. Um, I get that a thousand times and I'm so grateful again, just because I'm out there and I will tell you what my answer is. Dr. Graper. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and that taken taken the stress out of it of of not having to hide it. I, I really think a lot of people fear that they don't feel the surgery so much because they know we know what we're doing. We're going right. to do a good job. They right. fear that 
how am I going to tell my mother, my kids, right. my friends? And I just say, you know, half the people, well, I break it down into a third. A third of the people are going to know instantly you did your face. A third of the people are going to think you lost weight or changed your hair or different color. And a third of the people don't even know you have a face. They're just, <laughs> right. they're just not yeah, paying they, enough no, attention. Right. That's right. right. <laughs> you think they care, but it's youth who really cares. It's, um, it's, it's changed some in that, that I think they fear less telling somebody. They fear more, what if it goes wrong? What if I look? What if I have bad work? So it's really, really important to trust the person. And that goes back to the Hollywood example. Yes. Because, you know, yes. I mean, it's not like there isn't some bad work Oh, out there. for sure. We just don't have that problem. I don't even know how to make some of those weird results. Yeah. I have a, I have a theory. It's right. too much fat crafting. But, yeah. you know, we just don't have that issue here to know. Oh. And you need to trust when you're going under that yeah. this is not going to happen no, to you. Don't, do, did you think that before and afters were helpful? I love before. People love before and after anything, whether it's a face or a kitchen. They just mm. like a before and after. And something as important as your face. Yeah, that's yeah. really important. Did I'm, we do the computer simulation mm-hmm, for you? Mm-hmm. Was that helpful? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Every Everything you did was very helpful. I'll tell you, I, I mentioned trust being so important. Something that you did, and this is a funny story. Uh, I ask, remember, I asked, what else would you do? And you told me all of these things that you might do. And I said, well, I probably can't do all of that. Let's do. And I was choosing the things that I should do. The first part isn't so funny. You said do a brow lift. And I had heard only from people who had had this done years ago. And I said, no, I don't think I want to do that. And you explained to me how that procedure is vastly different from the way it was years ago. So when you did my facelift, I am so thankful that you did the brow lift. That was my probably my favorite part. Mm. It really and and I would not have done that had you not told me about it and then told me why you thought it was important for me. But the funny part. So you told me these things that you could do to give me an option of what I might want to do. And so I I chose what I wanted to do and then went home and the day of the surgery, you had given me one Valium to take so that I would just be comfortable and relaxed for the surgery because it's a big thing. And I remember I got over here and I'd never taken a Valium before. And I took the Valium and I said, oh, hey, good morning. Let's just do everything. Go ahead and do everything that you wanted to do. And then you it said. It wrapped you up. It didn't calm you down. No, right? I was yeah. very excited. Right, hey. And then the first yeah. thing, the first thing out of Dr. Graver's mouth was, Barbara, that's your Valium talking. We're going to only do what you trusted me to do the first time. But now I kind of wish I'd done it all. Because <laughs> now too late. Totally yeah, right, 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 right. I, I will be back. Barbara, I have a question for you. How would you describe your surgery experience? Were there any surprises? Because I feel like a lot of patients are very, very scared of, one, if something goes wrong, right? But two, the pain and the discomfort. They're freaked out about how painful it's going to be when they look and see incisions about people who have had a facelift. How was the surgery experience Well, I can just speak for me, but it was wonderful. And a very interesting part of that, too, is that I I came here for my surgery. And, of course, anytime you're having surgery, there are questions. I always pray before I do a surgery. Uh, but I... Just, I was very comfortable. I was very, very comfortable. And the, but the main thing I want to say is that he didn't cut any corners. He did whatever it took. And as it turned out, I was not an easy face to work on. And because I don't have a lot of fat in my face, that's what you told me. Well, you are a good candidate because you're a thin, that's angular right. face. Yeah. Well, you, I appreciate the fact that you did whatever it took at that particular time to make sure that everything was safe and fine and I had the results that I wanted. So thank you. It probably takes us two and a half to do a face. Yeah. But it does take us a while to kind of get going to get prepped and draped and monitored and go to sleep. I have difficulty getting their hair out of the way, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It looks like I'm a new dad with their daughter putting pigtails. Well, I'm definitely hair challenged, so I have the same problem. I think you're right. They dropped me off here, and then a whole lot happened before they came back to get me, and I had to wake up and all of that. But I was just impressed that you did whatever it took to make me happy with the results. Well, you're number one. Thank you. That day, you're the star. Thank you. And that's how you treat patients here. Yeah, so you you, you briefly kind of mentioned it about your, your follow-up care. And, um, 
you know, how was that? Did you, you left after your procedure, um, presumably, uh, cause sometimes we, we offer, uh, there are nursing staffs that will go home with patients, right. but presumably you had somebody that took care of you at home. Right. And we do want to emphasize that, you know, we don't let people come in, have surgery, and then, you know, take an Uber home. Like, that's just absolutely. No. And occasionally we get some people who are in situations where they live by themselves. They don't really have the support network. And so for those patients, we definitely either say, you got to have a friend, you got to have a family member with you for the first couple of days, and or you can have, you know, one of these um, one of these nursing um services that'll come stay with patients. I just operated on a patient earlier today and, and she's got a, a nurse lined up for a week, one week. Yeah, she won't need that. Yeah. She won't need it, but she wanted it. And, and yeah, I mean, it's Again, good for do the nurses. What's right. yeah, do what's right for them. <laughs> That's what's, exactly I, right. I was comfortable with the people that I had at home to take care of me. And also I, I had very, uh, clear instructions of what I was to do and what I was not to do. And I am a rule follower. That's I great. did everything I was yeah, told do. to we do, even when I felt like I didn't need it. But I, uh, I, and then you're back here in a few hours for you to tell me everything's okay. And, yeah. and I, um, and so you came back the next day. Yes. It take the head wrap yes. off, take a look at your incisions. If you know, you kind of used to use a drain, but nowadays, you know, you've got, you with the new fiber glue, glue, we don't even use that drain anymore. Yeah. Which is, which so, is pretty, me. Uh, as, uh, I think you are back the next day to make sure things are healing properly and then take the dressing off the following day, get in the shower. How are, you know, we put these restrictions on. Do you remember all those? We don't want you eating salt and we don't want you oh, laying flat. I did flat everything you told me to do. I was was it make hard sure to do those no, things? No, I, I just wanted to follow all the rules. And I knew that this was a procedure that I didn't want to have to done, do over again, or you to have to do over again. I wanted to do my part. And because the instructions were so very clear, and I will tell you that your entire staff, not just these wonderful doctors at the table, but your entire staff, they answer my questions immediately. And you do have questions like, I, I rolled over on the bed. Is that okay? Mm. You know, and, and they are so patient about all of that. They know we're going to ask sometimes silly questions. It's like me calling the computer place when my computer doesn't work, and I feel like I'm asking a right. very difficult or silly question. Right. And they go, hey, my kids have gotten older. I just look over at them. I'm like, can you help me <laughs> uh -huh. do this on the computer? I'm so there are no silly post-operative questions. So, no, I don't think so you know, it's a, it's a couple of weeks process, right? Like when would you say you felt comfortable going out and going out to dinner? And of course, you know, women can hide some of their incision lines with their hair and things like that. But, you know, we also do male facelifts, which we're going to talk about in the podcast, yeah. you know, coming up. But, um, you know, when did you feel like, like Barbara again? I'm probably unlike some other people, but because I was sharing this and knew I was going to be sharing it on all my social media, I just went out and about. I put my sunglasses on and, you know, fluffed my hair a little bit more. And, um, and if anybody asked me, I just said, yo, I just had some surgery. I'm so excited. Yeah. You, you said something earlier and I just want to uh, share a, a story briefly, um, you know, about if you look good, you feel good. And if you feel good, you do good. And I remember, uh, I had a patient that was a, a teacher and um, she'd lost a lot of weight, was in the process of kind of continuing to lose some more. And she came in for a consultation for, um, for breast and body. And um, she's kind of ornery, just not, not happy, frowning, not real engaging. And um, we went through the consult pretty well. And uh, she actually tried to kick my, assistant out. She was like, ah, I don't want another person seeing me while you're evaluating me or any of that kind of stuff. And I said, well, I can't do that. Like she's, right. she's staying in here and we're doing this and, and got through it. And then, you know, she lost a little bit more weight. We ended up doing her surgeries. And, you know, I remember on one of her, her follow-ups, she came in and she was wearing knee high boots and a short <laughs> skirt and a great, um, outfit, and she came with a, a box of Krispy Kreme donuts, I think, and was just thankful and nice, and her whole, I think she had makeup on, her hair was done, doing all this kind of stuff, and I just thought to myself, it it, it doesn't just stop there, because that person came not happy, right. and that person came, for whatever reason, not their best version, not right. their happiest version. Right. And I also think about how much influence that person as a school teacher had on hundreds of kids through the years of not being her happiest self. And to see this new person 
happy and engaging and all the, it was a transformation. Yes. And I felt like, right. And, and it's always stuck with me that, that whole concept of like being happy about yourself. And I, I know how, you know, if I'm exercising or, or, or doing things like that, I feel better about myself and the same for this. And I, I want Perfect people example. to know, you know, uh, Surgery can do that. It can change things emotionally and psychologically for you too, right? Perfect example of that. There's a saying, when I like my outfit, I'm nicer. Mm -hmm. So that takes it to a whole nother level. When I like my face every day. Well, you're a happy person anyway. I am happy. Did you notice any of that kind of thing? Of of what? Of, Of you know, the after the surgery of going out, it's like having a new dress on. Did you feel that way? Oh, I felt so good. I was so... Well, I'm 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 kind of You're happy up a lot. I'm, I, I am kind of perky. Some people think that's I've been accused of being way too perky, and that can't be normal. It's just in I had the a, plastic had a surgery dad. world, you can never be too perky. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, whichever way you want to look at it. No, so I uh, yeah, and I I was very proud to tell people. Oh yeah, I I had this done. It feels so good, and I'm so happy about it. And you really should think about it. I think it's great. I it, it's you owned I have it. been I owned it yeah. yes and and the same thing with people who are really wanting to gossip about it or say oh you know what Barbara's done you completely diffuse them they have nothing to say she's already said it that's right <laughs> that's right yeah. yeah I love that you, you know so I think I know the answer to this but just kind of in summation of your experience and your choices and your decision you know what advice do you give to those people that reach out to you either through DMs or are listening on our podcast you know when they think about plastic surgery like what what do you tell them? Hey, these are the tenants. This is this is w- what I commend to you. What would you say? Probably the first thing is make sure you want to do this for you, not for anybody else. You want to do this for you. And then when you decide to do it, make sure that you do your research. Make sure you know all about your doctor. Make sure you know people who have been to your doctor. Make sure that you have seen his work and make sure you are comfortable. Have the consultation. Make sure that you are comfortable and trusting. And that makes it all go so well. I was relaxed. I could hardly wait for the day to come. You were excited. Oh, I, yes. I was so excited. And then afterwards, I I truly am stopped all the time uh, because all these years of being out there, they all think they know me and I'm thankful <laughs> for that. Yeah. But they will now, because I've made this very public, they will ask me all kinds of questions. And I very happily, it's it's almost like a service now. And every time I post something, I get a question about it. And they almost, almost by the way they're asking it, it's almost like they're whispering it. Do you know what, I, even though it's in writing, but there's, st- there's still this little bit of a stigma. And then they thank me profusely. So. Well, I think people like you certainly take the stigma away from it. And I think that the results that you got, and I think that kind of the philosophy and the approach that uh, Dr. Grapers, you know, taught myself and, uh, and also Dr. Zug, um, is great. Uh, I remember, you know, being back there, um, doing a facelift a few years ago and just kind of asking him some questions. And he said, I've tried everything and some things have worked great. Some things, I just kind of take it or leave it. So now this is how I do it. So when you've got somebody who's been doing it for as long as he's been doing it and as well as he's been doing it, I think it's um, I think it's important. That doesn't mean that the young guy, the new guy doesn't have great skills and all that. But from my vantage point, it's been awesome uh, to learn, you know, the Graper way. And to be associated to with his name. Well, right, you all are very kind, but uh, we all stand on the shoulders of giants. And yeah. mine was Fritz Barton and Sam Hammer. Sure. You know, guys who taught me in Dallas that were superstars. So, you know, you do things that they did and you see what works in your hands and what doesn't and modify it and changing all the time. I, but it is amazing how many different approaches there are to fit. Fa- I mean, oh, you know, yeah. Rod Hester, Fahad Nahai, Mark Codner, uh, you know, these guys are huge names. Uh, and that's who trained me at Emory. But I came here and, and you had a, a different approach and, and I commend you for it. I commend you that you've, you know, tried different things. Brow lifts are a great kind of 
um, example of that, how we've gone from my tech screws in the mm-hmm. skull right. and That's doing things like, oh thing. my I God. Well, the incision yeah. premiered here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's a head. inch yeah. and a half incision. <laughs> yeah. It's nothing. Yeah. Well, tell us a little bit about your book because um, we're going to wrap up, not take any more of your time, but give us a little bit of information about your book and, um, and where people can find you on social media and stuff like that because I know people, A, are already following you like crazy, but people who listen to this podcast – I'm sure would like to do the same. First of all, thank you for having me here. Anytime oh. you want me to come back, I'll be glad to How about do tomorrow? that. Tomorrow, tomorrow I'll be here. Tell tomorrow. me. Again, I, one more thing about all of this is making sure that there's a lot of follow-up after the surgery, too. And you have such a wonderful skincare staff. Oh, and yeah. I can't say enough about them. So you all have – you have everything. That's the foundation and, for everything. I say it almost every yeah, podcast. Yeah. I say it almost to everybody that I talk yeah. to is start young and start with good right. skincare. Even, you know – Botox fillers, that's a great kind of, and then laser treatments, RF microneedling. We've got everything here to help people at any age be their best version, which is great. Well, part of my happiness and my perkiness is because I live in a state of gratitude. And this is a place, every time I come, I leave even happier than when I arrived because this is a place of happy, positive, talented, skillful people. So... I love it. I can't say enough about it. As you can probably tell, I've taken up all your time. Oh, no. the book. The yep. book. Um, oh, the, sorry about the book. We, we don't have time for that. But here it is, Coming Home, Recipes and Reflections. And included in that is a chapter about Dr. Graper There's and the experience here. There's a color palette to your outfits. Those are, that, those are your wheelhouse. Yeah, that's my that's signature your wheelhouse. color. I love my that. signature color. Yeah, my, as I'm in my, like a pastel yes, kind of right. I noticed as soon as scrub. you came in. Yes. And of course the Carolina blue over there. And right. then I'd go like Hills. maybe to get Go Hills. Go Hills. Oh, yes, I know. Um, go Dogs. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Georgia Bulldogs. Georgia okay. Bulldogs. Okay. But the book can be found on Amazon, Coming Home. If you just Google my name, Barbara McKay, you can find me out there. And it can also be found at my website. You can learn a little bit more about me uh, on the website, barbaramckay.com. And I'll talk about you there, too. Love that. Barbara, you've been amazing. Yeah, so uh, what a great guest for the doc dudes. Uh, if you've got questions, topics you want us to cover, obviously visit our website, uh, www.ghsurgery.com. Uh, it's it's on the line. Uh, it's a joke. And click on the Doc Dudes from the home page. There's a link to click to submit your questions and ideas. You can also listen to all of the Doc Dudes episodes at our website, as well as Apple, Spotify, YouTube, anywhere you want to listen uh, to your favorite podcast, which is great. Also follow us on Instagram and Facebook and find out when new episodes are going to drop and other information about our practice. I am Garrett Harper with Evan Zug, Dr. Robert Graper, and Barbara McKay. We are so thankful that you came and um, God bless. Awesome to see you. Oh, I love it here. <laughs>